And there's a fear old storm brewing now in four as the showdown at Glastonbury is about to begin. The Vale of Avalon in Somerset has always been shrouded in mystery and legend. Stories of King Arthur abound here. The tour is a magnet that draws thousands each year, young and old, Celt and Christian, who search for solace in the misty fields that surround Glastonbury. Each year for three days in June, this prime English farmland becomes the stage for Europe's largest pop festival, when the valley turns into a city. Michael Evers was born here at Worthy Farm in the village of Pilton. He milks a herd of 200 cows who graze on some of England's most lush pastures. For the past 22 years, he's been organising the festival. He got the idea after climbing over the fence at someone else's blues event. In 1970, he put on his first show, which was free, and at the time attracted just a few hundred hippies. Farming thing is an asset for me. They said, "Oh, yeah, he's a real farmer." Oh, is he really? Yeah, he's got all these cows. And oh, wow, you know, I'm not the normal pop promoter like all the rest of them. I'm not despising them. I mean, that's what they do, and they're good at it. But for me, you see, because I'm a farmer, it seems to have a special attraction for the music press and for the press as a whole. Twelve years ago. Anne Good left the leafy suburb of Hampstead and exchanged it for the rural bliss of Pilton. Her house, an old coaching inn, is right at the entrance to the festival site. Since she came to the village, she's been one of Farmer Evers' most outspoken opponents. Her son David is the organ scholar at King's College, Cambridge, but he returns home to support his mother as the festival approaches. Anne lost her husband Andrew two years ago and her constant companion is her daughter Vivian who's made use of the home's substantial outbuildings and has created her own riding stable. In one of the meadows which Anne has christened God's Field she's erected a 30-foot white cross made from old telegraph poles and it directly faces the pyramid stage. We are fighting a monster. It really is. It's a diabolical monster. Um, and this is Drug Alley here. It starts just at the bottom of our field. And you have all your various types of hash as you, as you go in. Um, and then a few yards down, you move into, into speed and, and LSD. And then, then you're into the heroin. Uh, I mean, the heavies in balaclavas, knives. Um, and, of course, this was the, um, one of the first places that crack was on sale. Everything is encouraged there. Condoms, free for everybody, um, by the pyramid. I mean, absolutely anything goes. I have to come to you. I have to come 
groveling. No, I have to come. No. Michael, will you please see me? Because I need to discuss this. No. This causes no, me to. more, almost as much distress no. and humiliation as the festival itself. Oh, if you on. came to me in January and no. said, Anne, you're my nearest neighbor, you stand to suffer most, and I'm coming to tell you what the dates are, and I'm coming to ask how, you know, what we can do. Straight away, you're treating me like a, like a neighbour, instead of like some surf. Mm, but I could spend my whole life going around the whole area. So. No, I am the most vulnerable. Well, you are. And I'm a widow, mm. and Vivian and I live here mm. alone. Mm. And you've got plenty of resources. Just drive up on the lawn, look. These boards, Patrick, they're yours, look. How safe. Drive up on the lawn and, and just unload them quickly. Okay. Just, just, just take them back again. Okay, we'll Drive round up on the lawn and take them straight off by hand. And Devon will give you a hand. Um, but no, uh, um, I would say the seven top bands we've got for the Saturday will be Buddy Guy, the Rich um, to Billy Bragg, but Ned's Atomic Dustbin, Blur, and to PJ Harvey. That you two and Dora as well. Now we've got a very special guest on that Sunday that, that we're not announcing. So, oh, but, so we're not telling anybody, and no one will know a thing about it until the people actually arrive on the stage. Right. I see. But now we need that to be said in the Daily Mirror. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Well, if they say the right things about what we're doing, then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I need some reassurance from the Daily Mirror that, that they've got the right information. Yeah. Um, so how do we get hold of that now? Interview with Michael Evis by David Good. Right. Oh, In 1981, says Evis, I decided to take the bull by the horns and run it myself as a business, using all the ideas that had been filtering through for years, I but making things that. work mm. financially. Mm. Needing a popular image to follow on from the swinging 60s and mystical 70s, Evis wondered what he could, quote, mm. lock himself into with any enthusiasm. This is David's eyes. And this since C and D's interest was beginning these to... These are your, your eyes, aren't they? <laughs> it was the right time to get involved with C and D. It was growing. He felt mm. that musicians would be sympathetic, but found to his surprise that a lot of political and... It goes on. Mm. This is very good businessman. Um, I wasn't happy with that interview. Why before, not? This is a Sunday Times weekend. The Glassman Festival has lost... None of its appeal, says Robert Sandler, and there's a whole page. Well, uh, that's his opinion. Mm, I'm reading mm. aloud here what you mm. said. But what no, you no, no, said. no, 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 no. That is somebody else's that opinion. Interview, that so interview, we'll leave that out if you don't that mind. That interview was by your son, Anne, and it's biased. That's not biased. I think yeah, that's a very I'm good one. Why is it biased? But it's downright, it's downright and lies in it. Who's lies? We've got well, all that on tape. Some, but yeah, I know. I'd like to hear the tape. Well, I mean, this is years that. ago. Yes, but it's But a, thanks it's for writing voice. it, David. But it's not. I wasn't. I wasn't very pleased with the pictures. Of course. Why are paper. you always trying to work to move into areas where people are in favour of you, and therefore but, but Anne, that's look, okay? I don't Just control the Sunday Times. Issue. The Sunday Times is not sympathetic in, in the not in the normal way to what we're doing. Uh, um, anti C N D and all that stuff. I'm and now. Michael, suddenly, we're not talking about a man. It's described car. here. There's a whole page on it. Um, it's just an accolade about the whole thing and how special it is to the culture of this country. The but paper. what is the point in getting that if I you mean, can't not, look after your neighbour? I mean, if it's not a radi have, uh, If it's your neighbour has to have a um, nervous breakdown, what use is that? Are you, you're telling me that, that that man writing in the Times is more important than me. Mm. Well, he may be more influential but he's not more important because no. the person who is most this important is to us is our neighbour, our why. nearest neighbour. If we why cannot, I'm so concerned about you. This is why I come and talk to you. You only come and talk to me if I demand it. No. You only do it so if I demand it. We in order to make sure that you're happy, don't you we? Have never yet oh, you, never. you have never yet apologised. To comply with the law, Michael Evers has to ring the valley and its meadows with miles of 12-foot-high corrugated fencing at a cost of £150,000. No, I didn't know. How much have you got? How much have you got the interlocking? Um, I'm not sure how many's coming down, about 100 hundred. So you've got enough to do a 
it's all the vulnerable parts of the ticket entrances. Yeah, you? we should. Yeah, we should have that. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 I'll show yeah. you what they, um, got a bit of paper. Yeah, I'll just. I'll, just plastic I'll show you what they do. Yeah. The, do they do? They pass the tickets through like that. You see. Yeah, yeah. So the other bloke gets it. You see, and they come in for nothing, right? Oh, they got a ticket. <laughs> yeah. And it's fifty pounds. You see, every time. Fifty quid, you lost fifty quid. <laughs> I really do enjoy the farming. I get up at five in the morning, get the cows, and, and it's part of my blood. And I think I've helped this farm together for longer than anyone else. The farm has been in the family for over a hundred years now, and uh, uh, as I'm the fourth generation, I'm producing the fifth. And I mean, we've been running cows here all through that time. Um, but my um, grandfather used to buy the milk in the village making the cheese, and this was a big sort of cheese place here. Uh, uh, and um, unfortunately, he ran into the uh, depression of the, um, the middle 20s, the 1920s, and, and uh, so he had to mortgage the farm and bail himself out. And, and basically, the family had been pretty skint ever since, really. My Methodist and Quaker ancestors were all mixed up with nonconformity and but yet they were crusading people and they cared about issues. They were very anti-war and uh, all of that stuff fits into what the festival's about, really. But so I like to feel, I mean, there probably is a link. Otherwise I would have been just dead straight promoter like all the others, you know, make all the money I can, put it in back pocket, pocket, have a holiday in the Bahamas and a house in Switzerland. But I mean, do, do we haven't done all that. We've given away the best part of probably two million over the past 20 years. On the third Sunday in every month, the Anglicans and Methodists of Pilton come together for a united service of worship. The festival has always divided the village into those who feel the event encourages the worst elements of city life and those who support the true spirit of the occasion as a natural complement to Glastonbury's mystical attraction. Fantastic service. Oh, really good. Kind of rehappy yourself. That's oh, good. Well, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined to enjoy it. So, uh, it's only suits yeah. happiness, you see. That's good. That's good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good. Well, thank you for having us. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow's okay. Yeah. When my husband died, it was brought home to me very poignantly how much I appreciated and valued the people that I'd come to know in the time that I've been in Pilton. I mean, up until then, um, I wouldn't have said I was at all integrated into the village, but I find actually I'm much more so than I, I am than I thought. There was the friend who, who just asked very sweetly and gently if she could do the flowers for the funeral, um, which was absolutely wonderful because she got flowers from people's gardens and people gave their flowers. People came with the most marvellous kind of giving of themselves. Somebody would arrive with, with uh, some scones. Other friends would come with, with a stew pot. Um, others with a bowl of fruit or a basket of fruit. Um, people would respond to, to one's loss in a very loving and sensitive way. In previous years, the most vulnerable villagers living near the site have had their fences broken, flower beds trampled, and have felt threatened by people trying to gate crash the site. To help ease the situation, Michael Evers has agreed to provide fencing for those villagers most at risk. I rang you to say we wanted 40 stakes. You said, yes, that's fine. You then ring me to say they're going to be there tomorrow. 
I get everything organized. Remember, it's my friends who are doing the fencing. Remember that I am having to protect myself. You're not offering to protect me. I then had to go to Shepton Mallet to do something for my son. When I got home, what do I find? He's been up with the fencing. He's opened the gate into Vivi's mowing grass. He's driven the Land Rover through her mowing grass and he's dumped piles of chestnut paling inside on her mowing grass. Now this is after he and I had already agreed that he was going to put this in, in piles on the outside so that when my friends came to put it up, they could do it more easily. Now that was only the beginning. My entire day <coughs> has gone on this. And I simply can't cope. I'm already on the point of having hysterics, as you gather. And we're still six weeks away. You never offer to do mm. anything. I have to come uh, um, begging. But you this never is not, offer. This I'm is not actually true. Um, two of my blokes put it up for you last year. They didn't. Vivi put but it up. Did. I've got photographs there. I've got photographs of, so. I mean, I mean, I've got photographs of Vivi this, putting it up right this, the way along this with is Joe. Absolute with nonsense. Irish Joe. Um, but last night I rang and I said, um, when's the deadline for the fencing and for the tractor? You said 5 o'clock today. The 5 o'clock today, 14th of May. The 5 o'clock today, everything was up here. Um, do we put the. I'm do not we put the, do we put the fencing for you up every year until this year, mm. and, and, and um, this year you've offered to do it yourself. So I, tr I mean, we try so hard in order to please you and, and to help you. If you are trying hard to please me, you go in advance of my requests. Then, even when it's compensation, you mm. try and beat me down. No, so I haven't though, argued oh with yes. that for I haven't oh argued yes. that for years. It's always but not for years. I'm having to ask you to do the bare minimum, for goodness sake. All that I'm I shouldn't saying, have to ask. I know, but all that I'm <laughs> saying is that when you bought the house originally, you knew the festival existed. In a very much smaller form. And you form, came and down to the farm, I showed you, you the, the whole thing. You were the first person I discussed. You were talking about it. You were the first person I talked to about it. To make this big thing, you're going to do all this for mm. people. You're, oh yes, you, want, you even want me to enjoy your festival. There's no hope in hell I'd ever enjoy your festival. As the festival gets nearer, groups of helpers are starting to arrive. Some return year after year to get on with the business of constructing the site. With Stonehenge closed at summer solstice, Michael Evers is planning the added attraction of a specially built stone circle of his own. Because look at it, it's an absolute army and camp to barricade. This is supposed to be a peace and love festival for goodness sake bringing out the best in everyone. Here we are, what, 10 days, two weeks, and look at it. It's quite extraordinary. I find this so hostile, so unfriendly, so very opposite to everything that it claims to be. See what I can do there, if anything. Oh no, look at that, absolutely solid. This is the glorious countryside that all these poor people have to come and enjoy. Really. Look at this. This is extraordinary. This means that Michael has absolute control over over this this whole scene long before it's necessary. Uh, you're either in there or you're out. That'll be the shape of the circle. Mm. And this is what I've been marking out yesterday. Mm. So I take my shoes and socks off, and I know roughly where the stone's going to be because I've marked out the perimeter with stakes which show the, the right sort of proportion. Anyway, so I just go next to the stake and, uh, with my bare feet, and then I just feel the ground. And it's quite amazing. In a very small area, you'll get certain areas which make you go whoosh and it ma makes you feel really strong. And quite close to it, you'll find another area which makes you want to sort of crumple into the ground. And by, <coughs> by feeling around the place and, and personalities of the stones and all the rest of it, you get a very good idea of exactly where they go. Um, but it is important for me to spend time 
yeah. with each stone and finding yeah. out it's sort of like its personality or whatever, where it wants yeah. to go. Um, the people that come here, you know, to the festival, in particular, to get sort of close to the really natural and basic things of life, you know. And it's not the corny, it's not commercial, it's so um, pure and solid, you know, and, and, and sort of a very decent thing to do, I reckon. Those stones are going to attract every imaginable kind of spiritual pirate. Once you are outside the realm of obedience to the one true God, you're into very dangerous ground. There are real satanic rituals operating. And I think Michael just exploits this whole thing for financial gain. This valley belongs to God and the cross needed to go up to state that truth. Then I discovered, of course, the positioning was absolutely perfect because uh, there it was, arms outstretched, facing directly to the pyramid, um, which dominates this valley. And it was really rather a sinister kind of thing uh, a pyramid is an occult symbol used in, in a great deal of occult practice. We are pagans, stones of the ancient circle, standing firmly balanced upon earth, yet open to the winds of the heavens. We stand at the threshold between worlds, before the veil of mystery. May the ancient ones help and protect us on our special magical journey. If Jesus was here now, I think that he'd approve of what we were doing. Couldn't possibly approve. Sure he, he couldn't would. approve sure of idolatry, which is, well, is yeah. He that's... couldn't approve of free sex. He was very, very strict about it. You, you must listen occasionally mm. to somebody else. Please listen to me. Can I just lean against this? Because mm, I'm that's... really very, very tired. And you can lean against the other side and mm. you can look down there. Mm. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? I think we probably all are in some shape or form, but Jesus was one of the best examples of what God is trying to do on this earth, right? So you're not a Christian? Oh, I don't know. I don't know whether... I mean, I'm not confirmed in the confirmed sense, but... Uh, I'm fine. I mean, it's fine yes, by but me. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? I'm not sure about that, really. I think we all are. We're, we're all products yes. of the universe. Well, and we're all 
mm. that we're all, we're all sons of God, aren't we? You know, I mean, they're good people and they're bad people, aren't they? Which fit in vaguely into Christian I terms. have called you bad. I mean, you can... I you have can called you bad. I know you have. I haven't called you bad, though. No. No, I wouldn't do but that, I have see. called you bad. I, and the reason yeah. I do that is because I think you are dealing in deception. And it's mm. this subtle sort of deception. We are all with gods. This idea. You're We're obsessed all gods. with this idea that there are pagans and New Age people down there. You can count them on, probably, on two hands. Michael, you're using people's mm, you're, idealism yeah, you're to getting, feed your bank balance. You're getting nasty now. I'm not getting nasty. You're <laughs> you forcing are. me. No. You, you just are. say you're I'm getting, getting nasty, nasty when, when, when you don't, no. you don't get to me. We return to Glastonbury for a look at the week leading up to the festival at the same time next Tuesday. <laughs>